guys, it's Janet Vosky. Today I'm going to talk about how I self-published my most recent poetry book, Neon Sun. I know I've previously talked about how I self-published my previous books, Bones and X, but I wanted to talk more about Neon Sun today because it is very different from the prior two poetry books. This poetry book actually contains illustrations that I drew in the book. And it was the very first time that I not only used all the software and programs that allowed me to do that, but it was the very first time I introduced illustrations to my own poetry books. I have previously stated that I think the best part about self-publishing is that you control every aspect of your work, and I personally don't think there are any rules when it comes to self-publishing. What I mean by that is you have complete control to do whatever you want. You can do the cover exactly how you want it. You can do the interior exactly how you want it. Literally every aspect of self-publishing is something you can control. Maybe apart from the printing. <laughs> so I self-published all three of my poetry books through Ingram Spark. I specifically chose Ingram Spark because of not only the reviews, but everything that I saw online in terms of print quality, turnaround time, and price were major reasons why I selected to work with Ingram Spark. Also, living in Australia, I think for me personally, it's a little bit different from some of the research that I found online because it was mostly geared to the US market, which is a little bit different because I did have to consider whether or not or how many different bookstores my books will be accessible through Ingram Spark in Australian stores. The first thing I would say to do is to do research and pick the right business for you to work with. So with me, Ingram Spark ticked the boxes that I required and that I wanted to look for when self-publishing. Something else that I liked about Ingram Spark is it allowed me the option to buy my own ISBN. Buying my own ISBN to me meant that I had complete ownership of my work. And that's another aspect that I absolutely love about self-publishing is that, that additional level of ownership. I remember when I started initially writing for my books, when I was doing all this research, I kept seeing things like, make sure you write a book that other people actually want to read about. No pressure, right? <laughs> From my perspective and experience, while there is some truth to that, I think that's a lot of pressure to put on yourself, particularly if it's your first book being published. You have to know that if you're passionate about your writing and if you want to publish it because this is your voice, I think that is even more valid than worrying about what other people think. I think we all have a voice and I think it's really important to express that regardless of what you think others are going to think or how you think others are going to perceive your work. Because I also think there are so many people in the world and there are so many different personalities, perspectives, opinions that really if you're going to keep living that way in terms of consistently having the mindset of I need to write this and I have to make sure everyone's gonna love it. It's not realistic. <laughs> I'm certain people have read my work and perhaps disagreed with an opinion or something that I wrote about, but it's okay because that's my book and that's my voice. So that, that doesn't and that shouldn't really matter. I think what matters is the fact that you are passionate about this, passionate about writing, passionate about self-publishing and getting your voice out there, I think that should be your main priority. In addition to that, I think editing is really important through all three of my books. I only hired one professional, which was an editor. And I also made sure that my editor was also Australian because I was really adamant on having language in my book that was Australian English. I've talked about this a little bit in another video, but what I mean by that is it's very easy to say gas instead of petrol, whereas in Australia we typically say petrol. So there are just so many things that could be considered minuscule to many people, but I was really mindful of that aspect. So that's specifically why I wanted an Australian editor. Something else to consider when self-publishing is if you want a print version, an ebook or both. Ingram Spark allows you to have the print copy as well as the ebook at just one price. I only did that for my very first book, Bones, and I didn't do that for X and I didn't do that for Neon Sun simply because, well for me there were many different reasons, but one of them being I personally don't like ebooks. And I know that not doing that for my books loses on a massive market because there are so many people who love ebooks and only read ebooks. Just from my experience, it wasn't something that I wanted to do for these books. Now that I've covered very general aspects of the self-publishing process and my opinions on those, I'd love to talk in more detail about my experience publishing my most recent poetry book, Neon Sun. Again, in another video, I have talked about how I designed the cover and why I designed it the way I did, but 
I would love to talk about the illustrations now. So I'll just show you an example. I just showed you the entry for six o'clock, which the whole concept behind this book is really, I love it. I'm obsessed with it. It's beautiful. <laughs> just, I love the whole concept of this book generally, but I need to focus. <laughs> Um, so back to illustrations. Something that I had to learn how to do was do illustrations. I'm a decent drawer, but it definitely took me a little, a little bit of time to actually get used to using the iPad as well as the software, which is Procreate on the iPad. Additionally, I didn't know this, but the Apple Pen, when you actually use it, and depending on how hard you press on the screen is how thick the ink on Procreate will be. So it was a learning process and it was essentially as cliche as it sounds, practice makes perfect. Unfortunately, it didn't take any footage of me doing any of the illustrations because like I said, it was the very first time I had experience with any of this software and drawing generally on the iPad. So I kept thinking, this is just a practice run. I don't need to record anything, it's fine. I'm not gonna use this in the book. And it ended up being every single time I started drawing it ended up being the final illustration that you actually see in the book. So if you are interested in seeing your progress, I would highly recommend you record yourself actually drawing and doing the illustrations because that aspect is something that I do wish I could look back on that kind of footage and just see how, how quickly I adapt to not only the software, but, but also my drawings. In this illustration, it's just a coffee mug. There's some steam and the steam is like a little love heart. It's adorable, <laughs> if I don't say so myself. Something I wanted to be really mindful of when doing my illustrations was to make sure that the illustrations were aligned across the whole book. And what I mean by that is I just wanted it to have the same style. The front cover has a font that looks very art deco. The contents page also has diamonds next to each chapter title as well as the chapter page number. And I deliberately did that as well to be in alignment with the Art Deco style. It just makes the book look a lot more finished and give the reader a specific feeling. Do you guys have questions because I showed you my introduction page but didn't really explain a little bit about the actual book? Is this book is about love. This book to me is the way I think love should be expressed, which is 24-7. So there are 24 entries in this book to reflect each hour of the day. So it begins with, with the morning, and then the morning has all those times up until we reach afternoon, and then it begins 12, one, two, and then it goes into evening, then it goes into night. So it's just playing into the whole concept of this book where I wanted it to really reflect the way I viewed love, that love should not just be celebrated on an anniversary or Valentine's day. It should be celebrated 24 seven. That's also something else I absolutely love doing with all of my work, giving every single aspect its own meaning while playing into the whole concept behind the book. I'll also do a poetry reading of Six O'Clock, which is the poem I showed you with the illustration. A few other things that I learned along the way of drawing illustrations and trying to put it into my actual book is learning the difference between RGB and CMYK. RGB is best known for digital format work, which means anything that's not going to be printed out, while CMYK is specifically designed for print product. So something I had to recognize, even though my illustrations, I knew I only wanted them to be black and white, I still had to make sure the format of these images were in CMYK format. So I downloaded Adobe Illustrator. <laughs> So I downloaded Adobe Illustrator and I manually changed each of the formats to CMYK and then dropping it into my Word document to print the book. I am going to say that this whole thing may seem really daunting and really difficult to do, but I really think it is something you're passionate about and it's something that it's it's been on your mind for a long time or even if it's just short term, but it's something you're interested in doing. I highly recommend you still pursue it because there's nothing worse than not doing it and regret not doing it. And the other thing I would say is take your time because surprisingly this process, although it seems very time consuming, it will really go by so quickly. The only thing I did differently with Neon Sun versus my two previous books, Bones and X, was that I used Facebook to help me market this book. In addition to that, this book was released on the 2nd of February 2022. 
And not only is this book about love, but it was published very close to Valentine's Day. So I think that also had something to do with it. But yeah, the very first time I used any sort of marketing was for Neon Sun and it was using Facebook ads. Would I recommend it? Yes, I would. I had a very positive experience using Facebook ads. You can also adapt your ads so it can be seen on Instagram as well as Facebook, which was something that I really like. In addition to that, my book, Neon Sun, I can't stop smiling. It actually hit number one on the Amazon bestsellers list and it hit number one in hot new releases as well as the actual bestsellers list for Australian poetry. And that was just such a massive milestone for me personally. It was so exciting and to share that moment with not only friends, family and anyone else who's come along on this long journey with me. It was, it was very exciting. It still is, obviously. <laughs> Would love to express that again. If it's something you're really passionate about doing, don't let anything stop you. And anything that seems difficult, believe me when I say it's not actually difficult. Think about athletics when you're on a track and you're running. You're only running 100 meters, but you look at the end and the flag, and the flag's so small because it's so far away. But if you keep walking, well, sprinting is where it's at, but <laughs> for argument's sake, if we're just walking, there might be some hurdles, we might trip over them, that's okay, we keep going. Doesn't matter, because you just focus on that thing you want, which in this case is that flag at the end of that 100 meter track. So if you're just fixated on that one thing, one goal that you want to achieve, and it doesn't matter if there's wind, it doesn't matter if there's rain, it doesn't matter if there's a hurdle and you feel like you can't jump over it, you just keep going. Keep going. Please keep going. Because I think if, if I had not published my first book, which took me three years to do, I wouldn't be where I am now. And I wouldn't have experienced all of these amazing communications and relationships that I've come across simply because I've self-published my books. So I'd love to end this on a positive note and really express to you that I think it is so important and so necessary for people like you and I to be vulnerable with our emotions and share our voice publicly for not only ourselves, but to help others. I really hope you enjoyed watching this. If you do have any questions or comments, please do leave them down below. I will get back to you as soon as I can. If you would like to buy a copy of Neon Sun, it is available on Amazon and other book retailers. I'll put all the information in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching this video. Bye.